Hello and welcome to Yesteryear's Mac Games, where today we're looking at a title that's been out of my reach for most of the channel's life, due to it being unplayable with even the tiniest amount of input lag. New equipment has rectified that, so let's indulge ourselves in this rather brown looking balloon popper. This is Jump Zampoli, or Zampoli? Zampoli? The jury's out on the correct way to say that. The core of this shareware title from early 1998 is essentially Breakout, with extra steps. One of these is gravity, which is needed to bring the all back to the uh, paddle. These little geezers are the Zampolis, whose ornately decorated balloons, used in acrobatic shows, have been set off by goblins and fairies, and I guess are now floating menacingly around, ready to make people's hair stand up when rubbed against them, or something equally devious. The Zampolis have thus taken it upon themselves to detonate them all. The paddle is a seesaw, which the Zampolis climb up, jump off, and catapult one another in arcs across the screen. The balloons pop upon impact, or at least change colour. Some of these need multiple shots. Once all balloons have been cleared and the play area is barren, the final target shows up for a Zampoli to pass through. I don't know if this visual style has a name, it's one of those aesthetics that were quite indicative of the mid to late 90s. I personally don't particularly care for it, I think it looks bleak and attaching it to arcade gameplay just doesn't sit right with me. It feels like the embodiment of the last fleeting couple of hours of a Sunday afternoon, as one becomes more and more aware of the oncoming work week. Nevertheless, a lot of effort went into it, and between the balloons, backgrounds, overly detailed bits around the edge, and the theming that extends out of the game and onto its old website, what we are looking at here is impressive and unique. The soundtrack effectively reinforces the theming. It's playing in the background, with the tunes reminding me of the style of ditties that came out of clockwork music boxes. The sound effects don't quite sit at the same level as everything else. A lot of them are Zampolis reacting to things vocally, and I don't think they quite fit. This extravagant look and feel was created by Hanno Mosu, a graphics designer who teamed up with Frank Hoffman, who did the programming. Everything was made on a Mac, bar the music, which was handled on an Amiga. Mosu had been making graphics on one of these before Hoffman pushed him over to the Macintosh. The duo were motivated to make a game devoid of any abstract violence and aggression, on the basis that there was plenty of that available already, which they felt was unsuitable for kids. That's quite a strong opinion. The row over violence in video games was well established back then, and a much bigger deal than it is now. But Ramp Zamp were refreshingly pragmatic in their approach to the issue, by cracking on and producing an alternative. Not many belligerents in an argument like this would think to do that. People just run their mouths and wind up the other side into doing the same. Stages are split into sets of eight levels, with a boss balloon at the end of each one. Dealing with these is a welcome change of pace, with each of them having some sort of gimmick. A fairly decent range of balloon visuals keep the levels looking fairly fresh, in comparison to similar games that are limited to having the same things rearranged into different layouts. There are balloons with special effects, power-ups, and power-downs. Bouncy balloons can sometimes be popped from the right angle, but are usually just put in utterly irritating locations. These hats, which I first thought were spikes, change nearby balloons when popped from below. Some big balloons contain little balloons. This timed power down has balloon popping cost points for a bit, and there were even multiple ways to get extra lives. Despite that, however, I would argue that those aren't given out nearly enough. I found this title to be fairly difficult to progress through with certain stages requiring me to smash the reset button five or six times in order to complete a level. I just couldn't make it through a complete set of stages on the four lives that it provides the player, so ended up only accepting a loss of one if the screen was almost empty. All sorts of little things made losing lives frustrating, from expecting a Zampoli to land on the seesaw and then watch them land on their arse in front of it, to sudden direction changes that could not be compensated for in time. I thought up a few tweaks while playing that could have improved things, I had a bit of trouble reacting in time once I realised I would need to rotate the seesaw at the edge of the screen. That animation could have been sped up. The final balloon in a level was often incredibly hard to aim at, resulting in lots of jumps over the top of it as I struggled to figure out how to get the angle right. Perhaps a little item to throw at the last balloon could have avoided this slow and tedious end of a stage, a bit like what BreakQuest does. My main gripe, however, was the inability to make small changes to the seesaw's location as a result of the keyboard controls. A slight press triggers a fairly large shift in position, whereas mouse controls done right can deliver almost pixel-perfect precision. One counter-argument to me labelling the game as too difficult is that it's supposed to be hard for longevity's sake. It's an old game after all, they tended to be like that. Another is that it actually isn't, and I'm just freakishly bad at it and should stop whining. 
Ultimately, I would guess that this game is not built with extended play sessions in mind, which is what I did in an attempt to get footage of a decent number of stages in a timely manner. Rather, it's something that a player boots up to play a set of levels as far as they can go, and then get on with something else once that's over. A handful of bugs did add to the annoyances, with the main one being the repeated reset of the level after only pressing the reset button once, as if the key had gotten stuck. The second was actually referenced in the README file, which saw the game's speed slow down if I took too long on a level. That bug fix, however, never happened. Updates to the site ceased shortly after release, and the future games that were touted never materialised. I can't help but wonder if the game's difficulty had a significant effect on sales, as I can see numerous potential customers booting it up off a cover CD or after downloading it, attempting a few games, hitting nowhere, and never touching it again. In summary then, I feel that despite all the ideas and characters that Jump Zampoli contained, the shortfalls in gameplay stop it from being considered a shareware classic. And it's such a shame. All the ingredients were right. I just feel it was shoved in the oven a bit too soon. A little more polish to the gameplay's rough edges could have been all it needed. It makes sense to try this game out, as part of a sesh of lots of different titles. But unless one has a particularly fond memory of it from yesteryear, I can't see anyone switching on an old Mac for the specific reason of playing it. And with that, we'll leave it here. Do pop your memories of this title in the comments, as well as how far you got, and preferred amount of colour. Did anyone play in sepia? Otherwise, thanks for watching. I've had a bit of an extended break, but semi-regular videos should restart from here on in, so do make sure you're subscribed to catch them as they drop. See you next time!